Imagine standing on a platform as a train appears on the horizon. But this isn't just any train. It's sleek, silver, almost silent. And then, in a blink, it's gone, racing at over 300 kilometers per hour. That's the speed of a cheetah multiplied by 10, slicing across the Chinese countryside like a flash of light. Now look closer. Your eyes follow the track and something doesn't add up. The train isn't gliding along the ground. Instead, it's soaring across a seemingly endless series of bridges. Hundreds of miles of elevated tracks, stretching high above fields, rivers, and even perfectly flat land. Sometimes it feels like the train is flying on stilts. At first, it seems puzzling. Why spend billions building tracks in the sky when most countries simply lay rails on the ground? Isn't that easier, faster, cheaper? You'd expect elevated tracks only in mountainous regions or over rivers, but not across endless plains. This is the mystery we're about to explore. Because what looks like an over-the-top engineering choice is actually a window into something much bigger. These bridges aren't just holding up trains, they're holding up a vision. And by the end of this journey, you'll see that China's elevated railways reveal a story about economics, strategy, resilience, and the country's bold approach to building the future. At first glance, you might think these elevated tracks are just a designer's flourish, an over-engineered quirk meant to impress. After all, trains usually run on the ground. Bridges are for rivers or valleys, not for endless stretches of flat farmland. So why does China keep lifting its rails into the air? But here's the thing. This isn't random. Every beam, every pillar, every kilometer of elevated track is part of a deliberate plan. These bridges are not just about aesthetics. They're a core part of a larger strategy. They connect economics, long-term planning, disaster readiness, and even social development. Think of it this way. If you were designing a city for the next 50 years, would you choose the easiest, cheapest path, or would you invest up front to avoid problems decades down the line? China chose the latter. These bridges signal foresight, patience, and a willingness to think bigger than immediate costs. And that's what makes these elevated railways fascinating. They're not just concrete and steel. They're a statement about how a country thinks, plans, and invests in its future. Understanding why these bridges exist will take us deeper into economics, engineering, and the long game of national strategy. Now let's talk numbers because building trains in the sky doesn't come cheap. Constructing elevated high-speed rail costs between 57 and 73 million RMB per kilometer, that's roughly 8 to 10 million US dollars for just one kilometer. And bridges and tunnels? They often make up 20 to 40 percent of the total budget for an entire rail line. Take the Beijing-Shanghai high-speed rail, for example. The route mostly crosses flat terrain, yet bridges still account for about 20% of the cost. Then look at the Shanghai-Kunming line, which slices through mountains and valleys. There, bridges and tunnels make up more than 40% of total construction costs. That's a massive upfront investment. But here's the key. Spending more now doesn't mean waste. Think of it like buying a premium car instead of a cheap one. Sure, it costs more upfront, but it lasts longer, drives smoother, and saves you headaches down the road. China is making a similar bet with its railways. The high cost isn't about vanity, it's a strategic choice designed to pay off over decades. Understanding this investment is the first step to seeing why these elevated tracks make sense and why they're more than just an engineering feat. They're a blueprint for long-term planning. So you might wonder, why spend so much now when ground-level tracks seem cheaper? Well, the answer really lies in perspective. Short-term savings often lead to long-term costs. Building at ground level may save money up front, but over time, maintenance, delays, and disruptions can easily outweigh those initial savings. Think of it kind of like buying a house instead of renting. A house costs more at the start, but over decades, you own something durable, reliable, and adaptable. Renting might seem cheaper, but the recurring costs and lack of control really add up. China is doing the same with its railways, paying more today to ensure stability, 
efficiency, and resilience for the next 50 years or more. Elevated tracks are a bet on durability. They reduce maintenance needs, avoid constant interruptions, and support trains running at 300 kilometers per hour or more safely and smoothly. This isn't just engineering, it's strategic thinking at a national scale. By investing heavily up front, China creates infrastructure that serves generations, strengthens its economy, and even shapes the way cities grow. In other words, this is long-term vision in concrete and steel, a choice to think decades ahead rather than just counting immediate costs. Building tracks on the ground might seem simple, but in reality, it's a minefield of challenges. Every kilometer of ground-level rail has to navigate farms, villages, factories, roads, and cities. That means relocating families, rerouting streets, or even demolishing buildings. Each step isn't just costly, it's politically and emotionally sensitive. Then there's land acquisition, buying land from thousands of people in a densely populated, rapidly urbanizing country like China is a bureaucratic nightmare. Legal disputes, protests, and years of red tape can easily delay a project. Sometimes, these hidden costs outweigh the savings of building at ground level. Elevated tracks elegantly sidestep these problems. By lifting the railway into the air, China avoids most conflicts with landowners and communities. Fewer relocations, fewer delays, and fewer disputes mean the project moves faster and smoother. In essence, these bridges are not just a construction choice, they're a strategic tool. They reduce social friction, protect investments, and allow the railways to connect the country efficiently without tearing communities apart. Elevated tracks aren't just about avoiding land issues, they're about building something that lasts. Many of China's high-speed rail bridges are engineered to remain strong for 50 to 100 years, far longer than typical ground-level tracks. Ground-level rails face constant challenges. Seasonal floods can erode the soil beneath them, shifting ground can warp tracks, and even small imperfections can cause major problems when trains race at 300 kilometers per hour. Every bump, crack, or misalignment slows trains, increases maintenance costs, and risks safety. Elevated bridges solve these problems. By keeping tracks off the ground, engineers create a smooth, stable surface that protects the rails, train wheels, and braking systems. It's like comparing a cheaply built car that breaks down every few years to a high-quality vehicle designed to run flawlessly for decades. This approach isn't just about convenience, it's a strategic investment in reliability. China is willing to pay more up front to save time, money, and safety risks over decades. These bridges are built to endure, to carry not just trains, but the weight of a national vision that spans generations. China is a vast country, and with that comes a wide range of natural challenges. Earthquakes, floods, and shifting soils. Elevated railways are designed to face these threats head-on. They're built with seismic-resistant materials that can sway during earthquakes without collapsing, and they glide safely above floodwaters that would cripple ground-level tracks. Consider the floods in central China. Conventional railways were forced to shut down, cutting off vital supply routes and stranding commuters. Meanwhile, nearby elevated high-speed lines kept running, acting like lifelines for rescue efforts, emergency supplies, and evacuation routes. These bridges don't just support trains. They protect communities and economies. Think of them as shields against chaos. They ensure that even when nature tests the land, the railway network continues to operate, providing stability and continuity. This resilience is a hidden but crucial benefit of elevation, something that goes far beyond simple engineering and touches on national safety and preparedness. Elevated tracks don't just survive disasters. They make trains faster, smoother, and safer. When you're moving at 300 kilometers per hour, even minor interruptions can be dangerous or costly. Ground-level tracks face countless potential obstacles, road crossings, intersections, or unexpected delays from animals, vehicles, or human activity. 
Elevated railways eliminate nearly all of these conflict points. There are no crossing gates, no roads to disrupt traffic, and no surprises. It's like comparing city streets with stoplights to a high-speed freeway in the sky. Once the train starts, nothing slows it down. This seamless design isn't just about speed, it's about reliability and trust. Passengers know their train will arrive on time, every time. Businesses can plan around dependable schedules, and the railway can support the fast movement of people and goods across vast distances. By lifting trains above the ground, China has effectively engineered safety and efficiency into the tracks themselves. Every bridge, every pillar, every elevated stretch is part of a system designed to keep the country moving at full speed. Elevated railways don't just move trains, they move economies. When a high-speed line arrives in a small town, it can transform the area almost overnight. Shops open near stations, hotels spring up for travelers, logistics hubs emerge, and new jobs are created. Property values rise, tourism booms, and skilled workers are drawn to previously quiet regions. China has mastered what experts call station-led development. By lifting tracks off the ground, bridges reduce barriers between neighborhoods and stations, making communities more accessible and connected. It's not just about convenience, it's about economic equality. Rural towns suddenly gain opportunities that were once only available in cities, leveling the playing field. In provinces like Guizhou, for example, Elevated high-speed rail has spurred tourism in regional logistics centers, creating sustainable local economies. These railways become lifelines, linking remote areas to major cities and integrating them into the national and global economy. In short, these bridges aren't just infrastructure, they're engines for growth, shaping not only how people move, but how communities thrive. China isn't just building bridges and trains for today, it's building a network designed to last for decades. By the year 2035, the country plans to have over 50,000 kilometers of high-speed rail, connecting cities, provinces, and economic hubs across the nation. Each elevated track is a deliberate piece of this long-term puzzle. This vision isn't only domestic. Through initiatives like the Belt and Road, China is exporting its expertise and technology, helping other countries build high-speed rail networks while extending its economic and strategic influence globally. Elevated tracks, therefore, aren't just about moving people. They're strategic instruments for connectivity, resilience, and influence. Think of it like laying a foundation for a skyscraper. You don't just build for the next few years, you plan for generations. Every bridge, every tunnel, Every stretch of elevated rail is part of a national blueprint, shaping the future of transport, commerce, and urban development for decades to come. China's elevated railways don't just transform its own country. They're reshaping infrastructure around the world. Through projects linked to the Belt and Road Initiative, Chinese companies are helping build high-speed rail networks in countries across Asia, Africa, and Europe. From Indonesia to Kenya, the design principles, engineering techniques, and even the trains themselves are being exported. This global reach isn't just business, it's soft power. By sharing expertise, China strengthens political ties, creates economic partnerships, and positions itself as a leader in 21st century infrastructure. Other countries benefit from faster, safer, and more reliable railways, while China gains influence and trust as a go-to partner for complex long-term projects. In essence, each elevated bridge isn't just concrete and steel, it's a tool of diplomacy and global strategy, showing that infrastructure can be as powerful as currency or trade agreements in shaping the world stage. Now, let's step into the shoes of a passenger. Imagine boarding a sleek silver train in the morning, the city still waking up around you. The doors close, and almost instantly, you're gliding across elevated tracks hundreds of meters above the ground. Outside, rivers, fields, and towns stretch endlessly. But from up here, everything feels connected, calm, and fast. At 300 kilometers per hour, the journey is smooth. No bumps, no sudden stops, no crossings to slow you down. 
It feels effortless, almost like flying, but with the grounded reliability of rail. Every bridge and pillar you pass is more than a piece of engineering. It's part of a carefully planned system that ensures safety, stability, and speed. But the experience isn't just technical, it's inspiring. You're witnessing the future of infrastructure firsthand, seeing how vision, strategy, and investment combine to create something that transforms cities, economies, and lives. Riding on these elevated tracks, you're not just traveling from point A to point B. You're riding on the blueprint of tomorrow, experiencing a country's long-term planning in real time. So what have we learned? China's elevated high-speed rail bridges aren't just impressive feats of engineering. They're a window into how a nation thinks about its future. They combine economic foresight, disaster resilience, urban growth, speed, safety, and global influence into a single strategic vision. Every pillar, every beam, every stretch of track tells a story of planning decades ahead, investing boldly, and creating infrastructure that lasts generations. These bridges are more than concrete and steel. They're national statements. They show how infrastructure can shape cities, connect people, and even influence the world beyond borders. They're a reminder that bold investments, patience, and careful planning can create systems that work for decades, not just years. And now, it's your turn to think about the bigger picture. Could your country benefit from a similar approach? Could investing boldly in infrastructure change the way your cities grow, how economies develop, and how communities thrive? If this video gave you a new perspective on the power of elevated rail and long-term planning, hit subscribe, leave your thoughts in the comments, and share this journey with others. Let's continue the conversation about how bold visions today can shape the world of tomorrow.